Hi there, this is Dr. Evan Osar, developer of the Integrative Movement System. Welcome to video two of this three-part video series of Integrative Movement Insider, training the older client and being very purposeful on how you use their programs and specifically how you integrate corrective exercise into the fundamental movement patterns that your clients are doing. In part one, we discussed the foot and integrating the foot into some common lower extremity patterns. In this video, we're gonna discuss the core. And one of our favorite core patterns is the bench plank with alternating hip flexion. Now, the key to this pattern and that key of integration and being very purposeful with corrective exercise is integrating the principles of the integrative movement system, alignment, breathing, and control into their plank pattern. So here's how this pattern looks. We're gonna have the client set up and we've already taught them where optimal alignment, breathing, and control is. So we're gonna use that idea in this pattern. They'll place the forearms on the bench, just make sure the forearms do not slide on the bench. Make sure they're very grounded on the bench. So they're gonna maintain head and neck alignment over top of the thorax, over top of the pelvis. Forearms are down, their scapula is staying nice and controlled. They can bring one leg back, second leg back, and they maintain alignment of that thoracopelvic cylinder. They're gonna alternate bringing one knee in, controlling it, bring one knee out, and control it. One leg comes in, one leg goes out, and they're controlling their alignment, they're controlling their breathing, and they, we do not allow them to change alignment. So as their leg comes in, we don't want to see them rotate. We don't want to see them drop into extension. We don't want to see them flex their spine like this. We want to make sure that the thoracopelvic cylinder remains aligned throughout the pattern. So again, they come in and back out with no change in that thoracopelvic cylinder. So the whole time, what we're focusing on is the alignment of the cylinder from the bottom of the pelvis up to the first rib. And we generally like to have a body parallel to the floor, so that way it's easier to both monitor and it's easier to maintain alignment of that thoracopelvic cylinder. As your client develops better control, they can bring their legs further back, but still maintain that alignment of the TPC or that thoracopelvic cylinder parallel to the floor as they go through the pattern. So that way, they're maintaining optimal alignment, breathing, and control as they move through the alternating leg lift pattern. If they lose their alignment, if they lose their breathing, or they lose their control, then the pattern is too high level or they're fatigued out. Give them a little bit of rest and then get them back to the pattern. So that way you're integrating the concepts from corrective exercise into their fundamental movement patterns and that's gives you the strategy to be the most successful with your training programs. In this video, we've been discussing using the principles of the integrative movement system, alignment, breathing, and control, and being very purposeful of how we integrate these concepts into the fundamental movement patterns. In this video, we discuss a common core pattern and how alignment, breathing, and control helps them develop, helps our clients develop a more optimal strategy for posture and movement. And when we're very strategic and purposeful about how we use these concepts, we give our clients a strategy for success so that they can do the things they need to, want to, and or love to do. So this is Dr. Evan Osar with Integrative Movement Insider. In video three, we'll discuss how we use these concepts, the principles of the integrative movement system, and being very purposeful about developing scapular stability and reinforcing these concepts through a pushing pattern. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.